Good morning. Welcome to St. Norbert Catholic Church. Let us stand and join in singing, I Heard the Voice of Jesus. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, good morning. morning. Happy Sunday. Sunday. To all those on our live stream, hi mom, love you in Phoenix. Uh, To those our homebound ministry, we hope you're able to join us today at home. For all those who have gathered inside our church, we continue our Lenten journey in this fourth week as we today walk through our second scrutiny for those elect who are receiving Easter sacraments this year. My dear friends, as we gather, let us place ourselves in God's loving presence, call to mind our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, 
the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, but the man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, a young, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. my shepherd there is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley. I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod 
and your staff. Lord, give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me. In the sight of my foes, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back, able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him, seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, it just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your, your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me to... to told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They said, they, they asked them, is this your son who, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We, do know, we don't know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, they would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, and he said to them, Give God the praise. We know this we know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, did you not listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. You know that God does not listen to sinners, but if, if, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is, un, it is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a, bl- of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, 
so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus today really aggravates the Pharisees. Jesus today intentionally aggravates the Pharisees to prove a point that he is the Son of God. That he is the one that has come down from heaven and that he has the power to heal. The power to heal, the power to restore sight even to a blind person, blind from birth. And Jesus really got to the blind man and his, his parents and, and really kind of just snubbed it to the Pharisees. Oh, ask him, he's of age, he can ask himself, you know. And then I'll have a line I like there too, you know. Uh, do you also want to know where he's at because you want to become his disciples? And they're like, no. You're his disciples. We're the ones of Moses. We hear this, this, this tension in the gospel today, this tension because Jesus is becoming more and more relevant to the people. Jesus is becoming more and more present to the people and calling them to conversion, calling them to change, calling them to look at things differently than before. How more real can Jesus be to the blind man than to spit and make clay and rub it on his eyes? How more real can you get would we do that today? We'd probably go, ooh, get away from me. You're going to do what? You're going to spit in the ground and rub it in my eye? Really? Give me a break. We would be like totally disgusted with that today. And that's great that we feel that way because that's how real Jesus was to the people. That's how much he turned things upside down with the Pharisees. And he wished to invite them to conversion as well. During this Lenten journey, it is one for ourselves to also to turn things upside down. How has your Lent been going? Have you started yet? <laughs> if not, today is a good day to start. To turn things upside down. To ask God through Jesus, our Savior, to heal us, to restore our sight, to eliminate those things in our life that are challenging, those things that are un, un, not of God, those things that lead us away from God. So each day of Lent is that opportunity for us to be cleansed and for us to have clarity of sight. During the exorcism we're doing with the, 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 the elect today, we'll have a moment of, of praying over them. Praying over them and asking the power of the Holy Spirit to remove, to remove and to open their hearts, to remove the, 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 the trajectory towards sin and to fill with grace. That grace and that blessing of God as they, as they prepare to, to be received into the church. This great image we have today of light, of being able to see the idea that Christ is that light, that light that we desire to see. At the great Easter vigil, we, we bring a new candle into the church every year. We light a brand new Paschal candle or Easter candle as we call it. And the great Easter vigil is the first light 
that comes into a dark church. And the light begins to illuminate and other candles are lit from that and the light begins to spread and the church begins to glow and to fill with light. If you've never been to an Easter vigil, they're a little longer, but they're really, they're a lot of fun. A lot of fun to witness that blessing of the church. The blessing of receiving new members into the church and also of celebrating the sacraments of Jesus Christ. So today, as we pray over our elect, let us also take that opportunity for all of us here to commit to the Lord, to commit ourselves to conversion and to change, to commit that we will walk this journey of Lent and truly welcome Jesus and his resurrection at Easter. Now I invite our elect forward to come up here and to kneel. And let us pray for these elect whom God has called that they may remain faithful to him and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. May God dispel all darkness and sin and be the light that shines in the hearts of our elect. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Heal us from malice, unkind actions, and injustice that come from anger, and open us to peaceful and loving solutions. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Open our eyes to recognize the grace of God and to do his will, so that we will not be overwhelmed by discouragement and despair. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Help us to recognize the needs of the impoverished and homeless and be willing to speak and act on their behalf. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Increase our awareness of those who struggle spiritually, mentally, or educationally, that we might bring them to light, peace, and knowledge. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Let us put aside our prejudices and fears and see others through the merciful eyes of Christ. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Open our understanding to the stories of those whose lives may be different from our own, that we might grow in compassion and forego judgment. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Increase the awareness of human dignity and the sacredness of life, that nations should strive for peace, freedom and security for every person and family. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Christ Jesus, fill us with light and truth. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus, you are the true light that enlightens the world. Through your spirit of truth, free those who are enslaved by the father of lies. Stir up the desire for good in these elect, whom you have chosen for your sacraments. Let them rejoice in your light, that they may see, and like the man born blind whose sight was restored, let them, let them prove to be staunch and fearless witnesses of faith, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to extend your hands of prayer blessing over our elect today. Lord Jesus, you are the true light that enlightens the world. Through your spirit of truth, free those who have been enslaved by the father of lies. Stir up, stir up the desire for good in these elect whom you have chosen for your sacraments. Let them rejoice in your light that they may see and like the Man born blind whose sight was restored, let them be proved to be staunch and fearless witnesses of faith, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. I now invite our catechumens and candidates to come forward. My dear elect, catechumens and candidates, this community now sends you forward to reflect more deeply on the Word of God. Be assured of our loving support and of our prayers for you. We look forward to the day you will share fully at the Lord's table. Go now in peace. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the world to come. Amen. The grace and mercy of God are freely given to us. Let us open our hearts and entrust our prayers to the one whose kindness and compassion are without end. For the church, may all the faithful be living witnesses of Christ's reconciling peace and love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of our nation, may all who dwell in this land learn to respect and appreciate all fellow Americans. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Ukrainian people, and for a swift end to the military aggression being inflicted upon them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families divided by hurt and misunderstanding, may the power of Christ's love bring about healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are preparing to receive the Easter sacraments, may they experience a deep encounter with Christ who makes all things new. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Norbert parishioners, may we be filled with gratitude for gifts God has given us and readily offer them for the service of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, for those listed in the parish bulletin, and especially Bill Durham, Debbie, Debbie Stevenson, Jay Report, Nancy Marcial, Jan Mansfield, Rick Erhard, Gloria Klingen, Sister Janice Sabula, Pat Braga, John Skismus, Kathy Durham Stevens, Winnie Bennett, Baby Reagan Hansen, Kimberly and Baby Sanders. May God graciously comfort them and restore them to health. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Daniel Perez, Tu Van Dao, Max Ewart, Hua Ti Pham, Tian Fan Nguyen. May they rejoice forever in the bountiful mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Anna Kangama, who, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of boundless mercy, hear our prayers and help us to trust the answer you give. And we ask these in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today there is a second collection for the church in Africa, Latin America, and Eastern Europe. Thank you for your support and generosity.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them, present them to you as a fitting, as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with the love of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of, of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extended, you extended, extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, for whom for, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chal chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal 
covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed, uh, bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Tan, his brother bishops, all the bishops and in your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us now offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but always say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you with all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our fish fry continues this Friday of uh, Lent, so please join us and help support our school on their trip to uh, D.C. this year and next. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you. Be now my vision, open these eyes, showing me all that I must see. To the kingdom, you are the way. Arise in me, and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise, and I shall rise with you. Be now my footsteps, leading the way, taking me where I must go. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way, and rise in me, and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise.